Hi, this is part three of the division series from the Argyle Math 30-1 program. Um, so we are on our way to looking at, um, the goal for today is to look at this division statement. But before we do, I want to put it in context, even though you may have just come from those other videos. So we did this division based on Lisa's question. Then we went here based on Sarah's question and said, why does this particular uh, division statement make any sense at all? Why do we need this divide by the divisor business here? Well, hopefully we made sense of that in the last video, the part two. And now I want to make sense of this division statement, that P equals D times Q plus R, or uh, polynomial uh, dividend in terms of X is equal to the divisor in terms of X times the quotient in terms of X plus the remainder, not divided by the divisor in this case. And why is that? Just as a memory tool, though, I'm just going to reveal this because I like that kind of thing. Woohoo! A parfait is equal to Dairy Queen plus raspberries. Um, I don't like memory tools for the most part. I like tools that really put meaning into things. This one puts no meaning at all. But if you need one, there it is. And it seems to stick in my mind. And I don't like memory tools, so there it is. Okay, so let's take a look at how to apply it first of all and then what it means. So the application is we take that uh, polynomial dividend from the previous uh, screen. We put our quotient over there. We put our divisor over here. I'm going to have to put some punctuation in there. And we put our um, remainder over there. We grab our equal sign and we have to multiply here. And then we have to add this bit and we're done. Now that too is a lot of writing like I mentioned in the last video. We can color code that too. Maybe it'd be useful. Um, so we end up having, again, the polynomial um, dividend. These, no, these words are kind of important because there will be questions that only speak in those terms and don't tell you what they mean. The dividend is this, the quotient is this, and the remainder is this. What was the divisor might be the question. So you have to know where to place all these things. Okay, so let's also make our divisor green again this time. So our divisor is going to be green and it sits there. Now the placement of the div divisor and the quotient, they can be interchanged. It just doesn't go very well with Dairy Queen, you see. You can have Queen Dairy, but who wants to have Queen Dairy when you can have Dairy Queen? Okay, so there's the Queen and there's the Queen, otherwise known as the quotient. And then the remainder, which we had done in a nice aquamarine blue, and we'll stay consistent there. Okay, so there it is. So what does this mean in, ter in terms of a numerical example? Well, you're going to like this too, actually. Um, well, I'm promising that you will like it in any case. 13 is equal to, remember the last example that we did 13 divided by 4 is equal to 3 and 1 quarter, or 3 plus 1 quarter. Well, here we've got 13 is equal to, the divisor was 4, the quotient was 3, and plus 1. There's our plus remainder, 12 plus 1. Um, this works nicely if you change this. You end up with 12 is equal to 4 times 3, which is an interesting thing, might be trivial. But right there, we have no remainder. What does that tell us when we have no remainder? It tells us that 4 is a factor of 12. When you divided 4 into the dividend and you got a zero remainder back in grade 3 and 4, you knew that 4 was an exact factor of 12. Um, so when we work with the remainder theorem and we get a remainder of 0, and we'll find out what ha that has to do with the function in terms of, uh, well, well, we'll talk about that in the next video, actually. But you do know that you have a factor. Notice that. Okay, we're done there, but we are working toward part four. Bye.